Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be doing some five minute crafts. <clears throat> 10 minute crafts? Um, you know, they're close to five minutes. I'm not gonna change the name of the series at this point because clickbait, no, it's not clickbait. The point is, the table is too close to me. The point is, these are quick and easy crafts you can do at home. I hope you guys enjoy it. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm gonna show you are these super cute bow charm things. First you're gonna need a silicone mold. Any small mold with any shape your little heart desires and some hot glue. That's unnecessary. So just fill up the mold with hot glue. Um, yeah. And of course I realize there are lots of materials you could use to fill this mold, but hot glue is the five minute version, drawing time not included. Now you can easily pop them out of the mold. Quite satisfying. Look at that. They look great. Even though hot glue is naturally gorgeous, I'm gonna paint these. So I'm gonna stick a pin into the back so that it's easy to hold onto them while painting. And I'm just using nail polish on these. Why nail polish? Well, it's sticks very well to hot glue. Most people already have some on hand. And it has a nice shine to it so you don't have to add any gloss or anything like that. And that's what five minute crafts are all about, skipping as many steps as possible. Make sure to do this in a well ventilated area. Your brain cells will thank you. Now they definitely could be done now. I'd say that was about five minutes for each one of them. but. I'm gonna upgrade to a six minute craft and add some little details to them with a toothpick to make them a little bit more interesting. I know, I know, six minutes. Who has that kind of time on their hands? But since I really wanted to do it, I found a way to block out that extra 60 seconds in my schedule. And once the paint dries, they're done and they're really cute. The back does look a little rough, but we won't talk about that. So what do you do with them? Well, that's up to you, friend. You can use them to decorate things, turn them into pins, charms, try to improve your crappy pottery. It still sucks. Stick them on your homemade sensory bottle. Wait, what? I thought you bought that in a store. Nope, silly goose. Here's how to make one. Oh, I'm cringing. So to make that thing, I'm using these Voss water bottles. If you're making this for a baby or you are a baby, use plastic, but I'm using glass. I should have used plastic. Also, if you can find one with a sticker label, that's great. I couldn't find one, so I had to scrape off the logos using a box cutter. <laughs> So you need a clear liquid. I'm using hand soap. Pour some of that in. Then add warm water with a dirty paint cup. <sighs> really? Then you need a filling. I agonized over the options in the bead section of Hobby Lobby and eventually chose these. Pour some of those in there to test it out. You gotta figure out the right balance so that the beads move through the liquid, but not too quickly. After filling mine almost to the top, I realized that I had way too much water in the mixture, so I had to pour it all out. There, clean bottle, let's start fresh. You know, I thought this was gonna be easy. You're literally putting soap and crap into a bottle, but it took me like 20 minutes to get the balance right. Five minute craft my butt. What I ended up doing is filling it up most of the way with soap and then adding the warm water a little at a time, testing it out until the beads were falling at a nice speed. Obviously, you can put whatever you want in here, beads, sequins, gems, glitter, whatever. Go ahead and cram those in there. Yeah, that's good. And now you have this. <laughs> No worries, just leave it uncapped and let it settle for a while to let all the air bubbles out. In the meantime, I'm gonna make another one. I decided to get all extra and use glow-in-the-dark glue. The glue is obviously very thick. Nothing is going to flow through that unless you thin it out a lot. <laughs> But I am gonna add a lot of glue because I want this to be much glow. Okay, that's gotta stop. I used these little shiny things for the filling. Shiny. Just plop those in. I finally got a cup with a spout and I poured in quite a lot of hot water. I think it probably ended up being about half and half. And to get the water and glue to mix, you gotta shake it a lot. Once the bubbles have settled, mostly, you can top it off and cap it. You may want to glue down the cap to make it permanent. I didn't, but you probably should. And here it is in action. Yeah, look at that. That is satisfying. Cool. Nice. Pretty. Oh, in this one too. 
it's not as nice looking. It's a little murky. The beads don't move as nicely. Wait, are they moving at all? It's kind of like the ugly stepsister. <laughs> But in the darkness, it will thrive. The camera really doesn't show it too well, but the glow is strong in this one. And once I figured out how to do it, the process is really a piece of cake. That's not real cake, it's a squishy. This must be another five minute DIY. Let's go. So for this one, you'll need some triangular makeup sponges and it's time for squishy roast. Oh wait, sorry, wrong video. You also need some fabric paint. Any of these types of paint will work. They are messed up. It's my aesthetic. So I'm just gonna use this container as a paint palette. That's a fun little tip. I'm sorry. I'm gonna start with white as the base. I'm gonna mix some orange, a little brown. Wait, that's creepy. And a bunch of yellow. And mix that together and you should end up with a cake-like color. Assume cake painting position and uh, paint on it. Just the sides and the bottom for now. It actually kind of looks like foundation. You can use a dirty makeup sponge instead. No, that's gross. I've never actually used a makeup sponge for makeup. Um, I find they work better as mini cakes. So I'm gonna do a couple more because, you know, this was just so daggone fun. Also, I didn't wanna have to put that paint away. I wanted to use all of it so the thing about makeup sponges is that they stick to the paint really well so you can quickly apply one coat of paint and be done with it once they're dry don't put them on each other because they'll stick now it's the fun part I'm gonna use this slick paint right from the bottle so I'm painting on a pretty thick layer for the frosting we want to get away with just doing one coat so it should be really thick to give that frosting look and a little line down the center if you want to take the extra time to go above and beyond yes do it. Use some sprinkles on there while the paint is wet. I made these sprinkles out of clay quite some time ago, so I already had these on hand, or you can just buy them. Whatever, pal, it's up to you. Let them dry. If you did put a thick coat on there, it could take up to 12 hours to try. But once they are dry, you've got some cute little squishy cakes. And guys, I think this is the first thing I've made that Opie actually likes. They're not the squishiest thing I've ever seen, but still, this is definitely the quickest way to decorate a squishy. This would be a good way to try it out. Join the obsession. And oh boy, what's that? Wow, these transitions are getting worse. It's a homemade bouncy ball. So to make this, you need borax. I stayed away from this stuff for a while because I kept hearing it's dangerous, but apparently as long as you're not weird with it, it's fine. Cornstarch, white glue, still have this obnoxious container from the two times I made slime, food coloring, and cups. I'm inside a cup. So half a cup of warm water, one tablespoon of borax. Oh my gosh and stir. More cups, two tablespoons of glue in each cup. I'm so good at measuring. One tablespoon of cornstarch in each cup. A couple drops of food coloring. Give it a nice stir. Yes, there we go. Now for the pink. Mm-hmm, okay. So we've got two different colors of gloop. Back to the borax. Apparently I didn't stir that very well. That's okay. Pour the gloop into the water. Why am I calling it gloop? And you get something that looks really creepy. Kind of like a, a stomach. It forms like a a skin on the outside Ew. but if you rip it open it's still wet inside did I do something wrong I just kept dipping it back into the borax to keep on firming it up and ended up with that yeah great bouncy ball then I'm gonna use the same water and put the blue in there same situation again yeesh so once I've got somewhat solid uh, I'm just gonna roll them together I tried to wear the gloves until it was solidified that way I didn't end up dying my hands if you don't want your hands hands to look like rainbow Shrek and if you keep rolling it and forming it you can get it into a ball shape I did this a couple more times and this time I took them out before they solidified so that the color would mix a little bit more which worked but it ended up mixing a little too much I also tried adding more colors you got to be careful when you're using a bunch of colors because if they get mixed up too much it's gonna look like poop and here are my balls <laughs> stop. I tried a bunch of different color combinations and sizes and they do indeed bounce. And you know they look pretty cool. 
are they really bouncy balls? Nah, not really, because they never completely harden or firm up. They stay soft and moldable. It's so slow rising. It's basically like a firm slime or like a putty. They don't really stretch. They'll just tear apart. Um, so yeah, bouncy chunks. Okay, so that's it. Those are all the five minute crafts for today. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I've gotten so many pictures from you guys who have tried the past five minute crafts. You guys make such cute things. If you want to email me photos of your crafts to be featured in a video, please do. I would love to see them. Have a nice weekend and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye!